special one for me. Uh, now you be the only one I see. Good morning, guys. So I'm looking a mess. <laughs> I'm fresh out the shower. I did put my contacts in, but right now I'm about to moisturize my face and get ready. So today, as you can tell by the title, it's gonna be today's gonna be come to work with me and Dana Life Case Manager. I might take you guys through the whole week because I have a very busy week, but I don't know yet. I don't know. But today is Tuesday, this is first day in the office. We are on a rotating schedule, but I'll tell you more about that later because my boyfriend's asleep and yeah, I don't wanna be too loud. So I'm just get ready with me. Okay, good morning guys. So, I'm gonna just sit y'all right here because I don't have my mount ready. It's 8.29 and I'm supposed to be at work at 8.30. Granted, the place is like 10 minutes away from my boy, okay, like seven minutes away from my boyfriend's house. So, I should get there in a little bit and my boyfriend is just waiting for me to pull out. And I'm not looking at all. I'm sorry that this is a bad angle. Like I said, I don't have my mount in the car right now. But I have it in the car, but I'm not setting it up because your girl's about to be late for work anyway. It's no point. But today, I do have a few things to do. Um, I have a... Oh, shit. Somebody hit their car. That's not good. Oh, he looks upset. Anyways, I have one client that is moving in today at 11 a.m. And then I have an intake today who's supposed to do it on Friday, but he rescheduled. It is so hard to vlog, so I'm just going to do it like this. So, we were supposed to do his um, intake on Friday. We never got to do his intake um, because he had car troubles, which is fine. So, I said we can reschedule for today, Tuesday, when I'm back in the office. But, he never confirmed a time. So, I'm going to go ahead and call him because yeah we need to reschedule that intake for him so we can get him in the house um other than that i do have a few clients to reach out to um i keep saying clients in my program we like to call them participants instead of clients so i check in with y'all when i get to work i don't know if we have much shopping to do today um like i said my one client is moving in and we got a comforter for herself like we got a comforter for her but she also has a son and i don't think we got a comforter for him so i don't know if we're gonna go to the store to go get that or if she already has that i just got to figure that out but um everything like her furniture delivery that should be all set the housing coordinator does that i really don't do anything on the housing side except for buy you stuff for your house and yeah i do home visits um so i remember one enough i'm gonna see y'all once i get to work because it is 8 31 and yeah all right y'all so I am in my office and I completely forgot to bring my stand so I could vlog with y'all today. So we just gonna have to make it work. I'm using my little, um, <laughs> my card holder and prop the phone up. But I just got in and y'all, when I was outside, these kids was like throwing rocks at this car and these little girls jump out the car. I would know they was way too young to have a car. So I don't know whose car that is, but they gonna get pissed. And then the one friend was like, I'm not riding in that messed up car. <laughs> that's what you care about your friend's car just got rocks thrown at it it was like three little boys against like four little girls and it was like young I'm like they're going here anyways oh let me show you my little outfit real quick just got this little white shirt i got a water stain on it from the iron but white shirt and his little pants and i got some sandals on real chill real casual guys i gotta bring my little me to work because one water bottle for the whole day is not enough so i got my um water i've been trying to get drink more water because y'all know my skin i'm trying to work on my skin that ceiling towel looks really ugly i never even noticed that so when i first come in i just check my phone to see if i have any missed calls from any clients but um my computer also has the app so i'm gonna go on my computer and check that 
see if I have any missed calls or anything like overnight. They're not supposed to text us after 4.30 or call us after 4.30, but you know, people still do because things happen. Um, but we're not supposed to respond until the next work day, which I'm okay with because you gotta have that work-life balance. Um, and then here I have my planner and it really helps me just keep track of everything. Now this is mostly work stuff. Yeah, this is actually all work stuff. But since I started classes today, no, I started classes yesterday again. Um, for those who don't know, I'm in a master's program at Capella University for clinical counseling. And I have a lot of videos on Capella, or oh, a few videos on Capella. So if you wanna see that, make sure you go check them out. Um, but yes, I just use this for work and also for like um, content. Like if I wanna create content, like I have all my stuff right now, right here. And yeah, so last night actually while I was at home, I got, um, some case notes done last night and then like, I wrote a whole list of things that I need to get accomplished today so I'll share with y'all what I gotta do today I got a lease sign in I told y'all at 11 intake I said 12 30 he never responded so I gotta call him I have some check requests due um that basically means when we pay the bills we have to get those the proof of the bill statement so you know we got to get receipts for every all the money that we spent um i have to order groceries for somebody i have to send out text about an advisory board meeting we're having an advisory board meeting this week um i had to get access to one of my clients bga accounts i have to do a, a lot of paperwork with two of my clients um and then i have to log a service i have to log two services three services actually and then i have to follow up with my client about food stamps and then I got to refer one of my clients to um, employment navigation. And then I got to give one of my clients a referral for a therapist. So as you can tell, your girl's very busy. I have a lot to do. I'm going to go ahead and make my first call of the day. Okay, so I just completed my first call. Um, so I'm gonna check that off of this. And now I am about to just send out, um, they sent out an email last week about our advisory board meeting to all our clients and participants in our program. None of them have responded. So I'm gonna just text them to see, to make sure that they got the message um, because we do want to have them in attendance and we want their feedback. Um, basically our their advisory board, we work with young adults. So we really wanted to be young adult focused and we want their feedback and we want them to make decisions. And we do like a lot of motivational interviewing just so we can see like are they making the right not if they're making the right decision but what decision would they make and what decision do they think is best for them we don't want to tell them do this do that do that we want them to make their own decisions and we want feedback in our program from them because they are youth and we are youth centered so our like our motto is basically equal partners and we want to not treat them any differently you know that even though they are young adults and sometimes like really young <laughs> we want to still give them the opportunity to make their own choices and decisions i have like 10 participants 10 clients right now underneath of me i'm gonna get more soon my case is gonna be like 28 or 24 or 22 i don't know which one we never i don't know like the final cap number uh i have a call coming in now guys hold on So guys, I haven't checked in in a while, but I'm here waiting on the client to do this um, intake. And he said he would be here at one. This is our second time rescheduling. And it is like 105 right now. So I'm gonna give him to like 115, maybe 130. And yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'll be here all day, so he can come to me some all day, honestly. But it's just like communicate with me, you know? That's the only thing I don't like, um, just waiting around for people. Um, so earlier today, I did the lease with my client. Uh, me and my program coordinator went over there. Holy Santa Lee's house is nice and she only has to pay $91 and we paid the rest. Um, it is really nice. Three bedrooms, big bedrooms, um, open floor plan, nice neighborhood and everything. It's really nice. So later on today, I do have a moving kit that I'm going to take over there and I'll let you guys see how we assemble the moving kits and I'll take it over there to her um, just so she can have some stuff to get situated you know just you know she's just coming empty handed so we want to start her off with a little something so i'm gonna just wait for my clients to come in here and if you don't show up we always reschedule but i have other stuff to do so today's a very busy day and i've been getting a lot of work done so i, I check with y'all later i know it's not much that i can show y'all because at least for not right now because like a lot of the stuff is confidential so i'll show you as much as i can show y'all 
but I'll talk to you later. Hey guys, so my client never showed up for his intake again the second time, but it's okay, it's okay. Since our like model is like equal partners and stuff like that, it's like they have to show that they want it. I'm not gonna fight for this more than you want it. You know, you're the one that needs to be housed. We're here to help you when you're ready. So you just call and reschedule whenever you're ready. So I'm on my break right now. It's um what is it? It's 1:40 right now. I get an hour break. But my my boss, he don't really be clocking us like that. He's real cool. He does not clock us. But like my boyfriend lives down the street, like y'all know. So I just come home every day for lunch. Not every day. Some days me and my um, co-worker will go grab lunch or we'll have lunch in the office and my boss will buy lunch. But today I'm home. I don't know what I'm going to eat yet. Um, but I'll check in with y'all once I get back into the office because like I said, I still have to take in that moving kit. And there's a lot of other things that I have to do. So normally I be taking my time on my breaks. I might just hurry up and get back there early. I don't know. I'll check in with y'all and let y'all know my game plan. All right, guys, so I am back at work. And my camera is a little, uh, it's looking a little dusty, but I'm back at work. And I'm gonna just take her in there with me so I can look at my to-do list because I have a lot to do, but I forgot what I have to do. Okay, yeah, so honestly, today was like a perfect time to do um, this video because my coworker is actually out for lunch right now at the same time. Usually she'll go out, like we'll go out together, but um, it's getting kind of dark in here, so I'm gonna go turn the light on. But this is a really good day to do it so I can actually talk to y'all a little bit more than I was um, earlier. I think it looks a little bit better in here, but whatever. So let's look at my to-do list. And see what I'm supposed to be doing right now. Um, I know I have to call a client and explain to her a few things. Oh, so I did all my check request. I have to order this girl groceries, but she's not answering her phone. And then I did get her. I needed one of my clients' um, login information for her BGE bill because we pay her BGE. And usually we just ask them to send us proof, like a screenshot or a PDF file, but for some reason it's downloading for her, so I have to go look it up by myself. And then I love the services already. And then there's like the system that we have for um like all homeless people, and we have to log their services like whenever we give them money or anything like that. Every time we talk to them, weekly case notes and stuff like that, everything goes into that one system. I'm trying to look up her BGE account now, so um I could submit her BGE to the board and coordinator so they can know how much we should pay. I have to call a few people and after I get that done, guys, I have to take that basket. But before I do anything else, I'm gonna call this one lady back because I told her I was free after two and I just came back off of my break. No free right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and give her a call. So she didn't answer, but right now I'm just responding to another client. So I'm waiting on two people to send me their grocery list. They haven't sent it. Nobody else responded to my advisory board email. I thought I had much more to do right now, but I don't. Cause somebody sent me their grocery things. I can get access to her BG and E account, but that's about it. Somebody texts me. So I just talked to a client about ordering her groceries, and right now, I'm oh, sorry, guys. I'm hungry. Right now, we can't order their, we can't go in person with them to order their groceries. They can't bring our car in day because of COVID. So, of course, we use Instacart. And I was just getting the people's list and doing it in myself. But some people complained that the person bought the wrong thing and stuff like that. I mean, that can always happen. That's always a chance you take with Instacart. But this client, my coworker was telling her clients, you know, just put it in the car, download the app, put it in the car screen, try to send it to me so she can upload and won't get anything wrong. I was like, oh my God, that's smart. But this person has like a higher total than everybody else because she has two sets of twins and you get extra money for each kid that you have. So her total is like $300 and she has 61 items. And I was like, dang, that's gonna be a lot of screenshots, you know? And so I'm sorry, I was just looking at my phone. My client just texted me back about his car and I'm struggling with me about his car and he's like his car wasn't done i'm like that's fine you know but who called me that before him not before him but 
I don't know. You could you could have just told me that you couldn't answer the phone. It's nothing. So I'm gonna reschedule with him. But proud of myself. I got a lot done today. Okay. So y'all know how I said I have nothing to do for that little sticky note. No, I have stuff to do. I forgot. So I'm gonna write down everything I need to capture in this visit. So it's like certain forms that we need to have completed, like when they first move in, and then every three months for permanent housing i am on the permanent housing side my co-worker um is on the rapid rehousing side so they have to renew theirs every month um but their clients only stay in their program for two years whereas my clients they don't have an end date till when they have to leave the program so i'm going into writing down all the paperwork that i have to get since she just moved in and it is about six forms six forms that i have to do with them um so and it's a lot of paper so like some of the forms i have to do with them it's like a goal sheet like personal goals that they want to work on um future goals and like what are the steps you need to um get to those goals you know another form is like guest policy they don't technically have to do it but if they want to write up like a guest policy and it basically says what guests are and guests are not allowed in your house what are your house rules what happens if you your one of your guests um breaks these rules and then we have like a budget we do with them like depending if they have income if they don't have income we budget our side like um the the organization's portion of it and just write that down like how much we would spend or we know that in the future like if they may make money we make a like a hypothetical budget with them just to have no budget but most to all of them even if they, they don't have any income they still get like food stamps so we find a way to budget food stamps and things like that you know and another one is like a shared expectations agreement you know just basically you know this is your job as you, the person owning this house the name is on the lease of this house yes we are paying for it but you know you're responsible for everything that goes on in this house and we want to make sure that you understand that and me also what i'm going to do with for you as your case manager we go over that and you have to sign that and then we have to do like an income verification um if they have income we have to verify it every three months for my side and then every month for over there for private rehousing uh, income verification is basically just to prove like that, that your payments didn't change so if you're getting ssi payments or ts or tca payments um that's like temporary cash assistance and stuff like that you have to screenshot your statement to say that you made this much money this month um just so we can know when to adjust your rental portion because people in my program they do pay 30 percent of their rent if they have income if that money changes like if they get a new job a better job you know their portion will go up or if they lose their job their portion will go down or if they lose their um any type of income the portion will go down and then we would just cover it completely so we just have to keep up to date with that just so we know where we are and where they are and making sure if you everybody's good and they don't need extra help or they're not trying to get over you know just to keep it even balancing the scales those are a few and the first one is like it's another form that is really big it's like a package it's basically just like to assess them and where they are um and that's a lot of questions like about mental health physical health um drug abuse trauma a lot of things like that and we just assess them and rank them on a certain scale um it is an assessment <laughs> we rank them on a certain scale and depending on like their it is how do I explain this? It's it's a tool it's a tool used for homeless people. And the tool basically gauges you to see like who is in more need, you know? So if you're like literally homeless and you know, you don't have any income at all, you have drug abuse um issues and you that you have like been through a lot of trauma you would get ranked higher than somebody else who hasn't been through any of that you know so it's just used to assess where these people are and to focus on where their um weak points are where they need help where we can assist them more and so like we do do referrals to mental health facilities and um, psychiatrists um, and we do have like employment navigation so if somebody's dealing with unemployment we refer them to employment navigation we just have a lot of other resources that we can refer them to and when we do this um assessment it really helps us learn more about the person because we really don't at least for my program before they were housed we really didn't get deep into conversations like we would talk weekly just to check in are you good do you need anything is there anything that i could do for you but when you really do like this spadette um that's what it's called it's a like homeless spadette it's called a spadette um <laughs> when you really do this with them you figure out like everything that they've been through like you hear a little bit about it like during intake the intake process when you ask them why are they homeless how did they get to this point you know have they ever been incarcerated something like that you hear like bits and pieces but this thing this assessment really goes in depth and um yeah you get to really learn a lot about people and just hear about the struggles and it's kind of sad it really is sad sometimes um but it's good to know so we can know where we can assist them you know i'm gonna go print out those forms i'm rambling so much but i'm gonna go print out those forms and 
yeah i'm going to see what i can get done here in the office so when i take it to her we just gotta sign it and we can go so i'm gonna call her give her a call and tell her we got some forms to fill out when i get over there just so i'm not bombarding her with all these forms and stuff so i have everything printed out and i'm just going to assemble them all together so this is what it looks like um so I'm like this is an section for our notes this is how we grade them based off what we grade them these are little prompts that we can ask them um if we get stuck I don't know what leaked all over the paper, but this is like what the little, um, the goal sheet looks like. It asks about when the goal was modified, when it's discontinued, when it's achieved, when the date is, when the target date is, what actions are you going to take to complete that goal? So it kind of goes like a little really into depth. And there is one for like four goals, I believe. And then we sign off, um, every month, like to review these goals and see if we're accomplishing the goals, if we need to revisit the goals or revise any of the goals. Here is the budget sheet. Everything's probably backwards, but it's literally a budget sheet. It just talks about rent, utilities, water, phone bill, child care, internet, cable, and all that stuff. And at the top, it'll say earned income, like whether it's from SNAP benefits, cash assistance, whatever it's from, all your earned income goes up there. Um, and then we have a category for debts, debts, any debts that they might owe, like medical debts, housing debts, like evictions, utilities, like utilities like bg and &E bill um any legal bills that you owe because some of our clients do have um some legal issues that they are dealing with that they owe money on if you have any loans or like phone bills or any debts any debts at all that will go in there and then of course you know we do the total monthly income minus the you know the expenses and then minus the debts and then i'll leave them with their price and if they're positive or negative we after we figure out the price or whatever if it's positive you know okay that's good we have money to save and put away and do extra things with or if it's negative we figure out what things we can cut back on and different ways we can save money guys it's kind of like a life skills coach you know because these kids they're young adults like granted we're almost this, we're the same age like i have some people in this program that are the same age as me or older um and you know you don't learn about a lot of this stuff and especially when you've been homeless and grew up in a system and just been through a lot of trauma in your life you don't have the same access to these resources to get the knowledge on how to do these things like i wouldn't know how to buy a house by myself um probably if i did not grow up in the environment that i did i would not know how to budget these bills and everything like that so um, we're really there just to help them and give them the tools and assistance that they need to be successful like homeowners and adults in life you know i'm gonna fill as much as i can right now and then give her a call and let her know i'm coming and i have to call another client because i'm trying to get another another spadat done so and she moved in she was my first client moved in and i just never got the chance to do it for her so i need to go get on that i'll check with y'all later this has a bad angle for my double chin this this gotta go so i'm putting together a moving kit right now for my client it is like after 4 30 but i have to get to it i just feel bad like i'm gonna just put it together i'm sure y'all can watch me put it together really quick and take it to where i guess Okay, y'all, yeah, so I um been out of work for some time now. I'm here picking up my boyfriend's little sister from work. Um, my client wasn't home, so I couldn't go drop off the basket to her. Like I said earlier, like it's really hard to try to take y'all in there with me because y'all really can't see, like take y'all behind the scenes with me because you can't really see everything that I'm doing because it's so much stuff that is like confidential and these clients have to be protected and I just don't want to cross any lines that I'm not supposed to cross, you know, so yeah if y'all have any other questions about my day-to-day -day life as a case manager um just let me know again just to recap i am a case manager for a nonprofit organization we break to house homeless youth in our city and there are special crimes that they have to meet they have to go through the mayor's office to get accepted into our program and we do get our money i know people have asked like 
y'all buying them this that and paying for rent and stuff where you get the money from but we do have a grant um through the state so that is where we get our money from to fund all these things so we do pay for like the rent the utility bills bg me we pay for phone bills we pay for storage units it's like what don't we pay for we pay for a lot of things we pay for furniture to help them get moved in if their furniture isn't going to be ready by their moving day we pay to get them like air mattresses and stuff like that and blankets and stuff so they can at least be somewhere sheltered in their own space you know but we also put money towards like educational things like um life skills classes if they want to go and become an rn we pay for classes like that we pay for driving school so people can get their license boss is even talking about buying people cars and i don't know if that will be included in the budget but that is something um that we have money we definitely have money for in the budget but we do a lot for these people and it feels really good like just to know that i'm impacting someone so directly like that you know my one client she was like street homeless for a while because there's different types of homelessness like there's like levels of homelessness and i did not know this before working in this job like you can be literally like street homeless you can be like jumping place to place or you can be like facing eviction and stuff like that all those things are different types of homeless and i did not know that that may sound ignorant or i don't know but i just thought like homelessness means you on the street you know you're in a shelter or something like that no but there's different types of homelessness i'm just so happy for my client because she was pregnant and she was waiting for housing she was waiting for housing for a while and it was getting very close to the wire but finally last week we moved her into her house and she had the baby over the weekend so i'm so happy i'm so thankful that god like was able to like keep that baby up inside of her because she was supposed to be getting induced and everything and i really look a mess right now guys and i'm sorry for that but i'm just really happy how we are helping these people and just giving back to the community you know especially young black people that's what i really love that the, these services are for young black people i mean they're for everyone they're for everyone but we're really making a difference in young black people because of the population that we live in in our city and I'm really happy for that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. I'll see you in my next video. Make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe, guys. I'm almost at 800 subscribers. And I would love to get to 800 subscribers because that means we're only 200 more subscribers away from 1,000. And that will lead to me getting monetized. And I thank everyone who has subscribed so far and helped me along on this journey. So yeah, drop down in the comment section the next video that you want to see because whatever y'all want to see i'm gonna do it for y'all i'm gonna do it for y'all bye y'all